Let's just change the setting or two here. Configure, 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 configure. There are so many. This is part two of my comprehensive founder tutorial for Pathfinder 2E. In this video, I'm gonna be covering my recommended settings for base foundry, as well as the settings for Pathfinder 2E foundry and all the modules I think are essential for a good game. Last video, I asked you to install a few modules and we haven't fully used them yet, but we're definitely gonna be setting them up today. And I'm even gonna install a few more modules. The first one you need to add to this list is PF2E. E tool belt and the second one is pf2e keybind menagerie so get your modules installed and enabled we're going to start the world and start rummaging through the settings to see what fits us best and remember to like and subscribe if you liked what you saw today part one core foundry settings let's go in and out 20 minutes adventure so let's get started by going to the top right in the cog wheel and going to configure settings. We can just click on core here and start with the first configure permission. Most of these permissions are fine as a default, but there's a few that I would recommend you change immediately. And remember that trusted players get more permissions than normal players. So if you trust your players under user configuration, you want to give them that role. Regardless, the one thing I always change is display mouse cursor because it drives me insane seeing people's mouse cursors float around the screen, but that's ultimately your call. I would also disable manual roles even for trusted players, but also give them the permission to upload new files. Your mileage is gonna vary in what permissions you wanna give to what players. If your players are well-behaved people, there really shouldn't be any issues at your table. Anyway, that's the permissions. Give them a look yourself and see what you want to change. The next part is audio video configuration. Being honest, I've never used this and I never will. I use Discord like a normal person. Now the next part's called configure default token settings and you could have changed so many things that would have been useful if it actually worked in the PF2E system. They do fix it. Here's my recommended settings anyway. I would recommend display name hovered by anyone. Uh, I would prepend an objective to unlink tokens because it's fun and then I would go to the resources panel, ignore everything else and display bars should be always for owner. Configuring additional fonts sounds extremely boring so I'm just going to skip it and move on. Configuring the combat tracker is important. I would recommend you track HP as a resource and definitely check skip defeated. This makes it so that if you mark an enemy as defeated in combat and move to the next combatant it's going to skip it. Anyway, you can set up combat theme if you'd like, and the rest of the settings, I wouldn't really touch, to be honest. Let's move on. Dice configuration is new in version 12 and lets you manually input dice rolls, you cheaty person. You don't do it. 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 Let's ignore configure art and configure default sheets as well. All right, moving on. I recommend you never disable the game canvas. It's pretty important. The language can be whatever language you need. I use English. As far as the preferred color scheme, I haven't seen it make much of a difference, but I do like dark mode, so... The little lock icon is from Force Klein settings. If you click on it once, it'll make it the default setting for all your players. Although they can still change the settings around if they wish. Do it. Ignore this. Ignore this. I guess chat bubbles are really cool, so keep them. Definitely unselect pan to token speaker. And then make sure you force client settings because otherwise it's gonna annoy everybody. It makes it so that if anybody types in chat, it pans to them, which will get really annoying really quickly, especially if they're across the map. This is fine. This is fine. I like this setting. This allows you to deselect tokens by just clicking on the map. It's useful for many modules we'll be adding later. So yeah, it's a good, it's a good option, but it's up to you. Anyway, performance mode, I would recommend whatever your computer can handle. Mine is fine on maximum, so I'll keep it on that. I wouldn't mess with maximum frame rate unless you're having performance issues. FPS meter, eh, it's fine. You can you can have it if you want. And then definitely let your players know about photosensitivity mode and do not select token drag vision because it is meta gamey. This one's fine, I think, for the most part, uh, unless you have a less powerful machine. This one's fine, this one's fine, this one's fine, this one's fine. Yeah, I recommend you leave everything else as is and definitely don't touch the square grid diagonals unless you want to mess with the PF2E rules. And that was just the core settings. Let's start the Pathfinder 2E part of this. Let's go. Part two, the Pathfinder 2E system settings. 
Please remember that these are settings that I personally have used. I'm not going to explain every single setting. All right, we're gonna start from the top with manage automation. I would leave most, if not all of these the same. The one I would add is remove expired effects. Maybe later though, once you know what those effects are and definitely add encumbrance because you don't want your party walking around with that statue. We're gonna move on to limit metagame information. This one's mostly GM dependent on how much you want to share with your players, but I just leave everything here as is because these are my preferred settings. Check them out closely and see which one you like to change, but I recommend you leave them as is. If you don't know what these do yet, you'll figure them out over time. We're going to go to toggle variant rules and there is a very important rule here. No, not that one. It's the one below. That's right, free archetype. Free archetype. Free archetype. Archetype is archetype is archetype. Free archetype. And you want to check that if you're playing a reasonably good Pathfinder 2e game. Obviously, if it's your first time, maybe don't, but... Oh yeah, and there were other rules in there. I fear no man, but that thing... It scares me. You can mess around with the world clock if you'd like, like changing it to a 12 hour or whatever, but I don't mess with it. All right, let's move to on to the next. Leave that as is, leave that as is, leave this as is as well. I wouldn't touch most of these, to be honest. I wouldn't also use critical hit and fumble cards, uh, but you can if you really want to. Uh, you can enable those. Uh, leave that as color. I don't touch this. I don't touch show conditions during encounters and everything else. Ooh, there's a very important setting here. Change that to always or in battle. This is extremely important. I'll show you how it works in a second. It's been a second. All right, this will allow you to show you the ruler whenever you drag and drop a character. It's pretty cool for measuring distances when you're in combat or even out of combat. Yeah, enable it. Now, that was part two. That was pretty quick. Let's move on to part three, the final part the module settings. Part three, core module settings. I will not be going through every single setting. There's a lot in tool belt and workbench. These are the settings I use and I'll explain them briefly. There's gonna be a lot of rules here, so please pay attention. I don't touch NPC mystification settings. You can play around with that on your own time. As far as reminder settings, I change a couple of settings here, like targeting reminder to remind my players to target. Uh, I also click on Edelons can attack while dead and actually also reminder to if you can't attack, you can't attack if you're dead, right? I do do breath weapon reminders and honestly, this is pretty much about it for the reminders. I don't touch the hero point handler. You can mess with it though. Just see what it does. All right, save this setting and let's go to the world automation. This is by far a lot of settings you're going to have to change. So I think you should just follow along and trust the process here. Look, don't worry. Everything's gonna be fine, trust me. Setting initiative just before the current combatant, I would do it if one character combatant reaches zero HP. Who's about to auto roll damage? I usually allow it for all. There we go. Persistent damage, yes. Uh, do not allow automatic roll recovery because it does it for your players and that's no fun. Apply persistent healing. Yes, automatically handle down recovery. Uh, actually, I put GM here, but it's for all. Unless you wanna, you can mess with it, I guess. It's up to you. It's all, everything, all of these settings are at the end up to you. So decide on what you're doing. But uh, reduce stunned, absolutely. Go unconscious if dying removed at zero. Remove unconscious, give wounded, increase dying for uh, all player characters and familiars. So go ahead and select, oh, yeah, add plus, add one plus wounded. Uh, Non-lethal damage is not just damage, it's actually uh, doesn't kill. Uh, there's so many settings here, oh my God. All right, and add more dying if critically damaged by an enemy, add dying, yes, definitely do that. These are all rules as written things we're doing, so keep that in mind. Add dying for characters plus familiars. I would, I'm doing for characters for familiars because I don't want NPCs to, mess around with this, right? Unless you have a really important NPC, you can change the settings afterwards. Uh, ignore that one last setting, we're gonna be using automation a little bit, so don't worry about it. And remove dying when above zero HP. Oh my God, that was a lot.
Did you think we were done? No, we're not done. We're gonna go to client automation settings here. All right, let's hit some of these buttons. I'll roll damage for strikes that hit. I'll roll damage for spell attacks that hit. For any non-attack spell. Now keep in mind all these I'm doing can be optional if you really want to, but these will make my games more efficient. Notify when a spell attack is rolled and no spell card was found. I actually don't know what that means. All right, automatically handle reco recovery and automatically reduce the frightening condition. Do all of those. All right, more. We're gonna, the house rules are, you're not gonna worry about it right now. You're new to Pathfinder. Uh, we're gonna go to, so actions that cannot be used, force that. And lastly, I would remove the modifiers from recall knowledge because they're kind of annoying. And that's workbench for you. We're done with workbench. Now we're gonna do tool belt. I'm gonna to try to be fast with this as fast as I can because it's gonna take forever if I don't. Let's go to tool belt and speed run some settings. All right, don't worry about actionable. Don't worry about automatic rune progression. This would be useful and it's a setting you can click for free, so do it. Enable Battle Merchant. If you don't know how to use this, you'll learn eventually. Uh, I don't actually do this, so that's fine. This is useful. It's good to force. Don't reload immediately, just wait. It's good to also force this. Giveth, this is important. This is important. Giveth is important. Enable it. I don't use hero actions. I don't like hiding my damages and I don't really care about this special identify sheet. Although it might be pretty cool if you learn how to use it. Do it, try it. I'm not gonna do it though. Uh, I don't like merging damages. This is important. Don't, no drop bulk. Yep, bulk that's dropping your inventory doesn't weigh anything. That's how it should be in the base game. Weightless coins, sure. Max, this is for Eidolons. Select it if you have an Eidolon. You can learn it later. You like this, to be honest. And I like this as well. This is actually really cool. Enable it and force it. I'll show you. I'll show you how this works. Spell summary makes your spells list look like this and all your players can just click on the spell casting tab twice to have it change give it a shot it's pretty cool yes force it yes force it yes these settings are all super useful force it i don't like small force it this is super useful force it I mean, force it. Really, do. I don't like dismissing it, it's fine. Underground is important. Force it. Important, force it. Important, important, force it, force it. Nobody really watches the ending of my videos because you've got what you've came for, but if you are watching, know I love you. And the next tutorial is going to be how to create your first Foundry character, both from the player's and the DM side. So keep an eye out for that. And stay sane, lunatics.